All right, I want to do a video today about how to spot Jesuit infiltrators. Uh, as we talked about in my interview with Eric John Phelps, the very last uh, safe haven, so to speak, for Christians is within the King James Bible believing movement. Uh, we're the last group that hasn't been completely overturned by the Jesuits uh, and now in the back pocket of the Vatican. Uh, we still have an independent spirit where we can actually get the truth out. We're not controlled by the Jesuits, okay? But they have infiltrated and they are pushing some of their Catholic um, teachings and doctrines. But I'm uh, just going to show you a couple things here. This, these are going to be my sources for this video. Uh, first of all, we have the Alberto comics here, volume 12, volume 14, and volume 20. And uh, this book here, which is an uh, interesting, interesting book. A lot of people say it was just a, Alberto Rivera was just a um, character that Jack Chip made up out of thin air. Uh, no, he's a real, a real man right there is his picture. Right here is the book about him. Uh, you can, you know, look in here and he has all of his... Uh, uh, identification card and everything Let's see right there and uh, he's got a lot of other proofs and things like this you know and there he is as a Jesuit priest I zoom in here so you know, definitely a very interesting book. Uh, show this real quick. Testimonies from ex-Catholic clergy. You can read these on your own time. Just pause it and read it. Okay. Don't think that there's anything else I'm going to show from that. So, interesting book. But um, definitely Alberto is the real deal. Uh, very, very interesting things that he has to say. Here you have another great book, The Sec Secret History of the Jesuits. There are tie-ins to the Nazi regime. I've showed this book in a lot of different studies. Very good, very thorough book. Um, really interesting things in here. Again, not going to go over it in this one, but this is another great source if you want to know how the Jesuits do things. And then here's probably the definitive work on the whole Jesuit order, Vatican Assassins, by Ark. John Phelps, and uh, he has the CD here with his book, kind of a ebook or whatever. There, and there you have that, and then um, I think always pops off. This one here is another CD-ROM. It has a, a couple rare books on it. So, uh, but very very intelligent man. So if you if you've seen the article, you know what I'm talking, or the uh, interview I did with him, you know what I'm talking about. He's a very intelligent man, but uh, definitely covers a lot about the Jesuits in there and how they uh, have manipulated countries and, and through the media, through war, through all kinds of things. And they are intimately involved in uh, infil infiltrating, I mean, that was the whole purpose of the Jesuit order. And um, I want to show you some interesting things here. In this study, we're going to look here at Alberto, volume 12. This is about his story of how he got into the Jesuit order. And we have page 19. We'll zoom in here. Priests who had been successfully infiltrated, who had successfully infiltrated the Plymouth Brethren, gave us books by Darby, Schofield, Kelly, etc. We studied their dispensational charts. These are the seven churches of the book of Revelation. We even help Re Plymouth Brethren type services. Uh, the priest showed us how to break bread on the Lord's Day. When they were, felt we were ready, they would give us locations of churches to infiltrate and told us how to pretend we accepted Christ. Pretend you accepted Christ? You mean like somebody could fake being saved? Mm -hmm. You see, that's why it's so important to judge people's fruits. To judge people whether they've... Uh, had a truly changed life or not. Not just a profession of faith. Very important. It says here, How did you know that where these church assemblies were located? The only religion allowed in Spain was Roman Catholicism. The local priests had checklists. If someone didn't come to Mass, the secret police were notified. They would follow them 
follow them until they found their underground churches. Yep. We were taught how to play with the children of the church members and, with, and the questions to ask the children when we were alone. Oh, thank you, Alberto, she says. Also, when invited to dinner, we were shown how to bring flowers to the lady to be very polite and open doors for them, went alone with them to flatter them about how beautiful and charming they were. We learned how to play on their sentiments, uh, or feelings, another way to say it, by showing great sympathy when one of their loved ones died, also to show great interest in, any, in them when passing through any great crisis. The more interesting part was how to divide a church and destroy a pastor who said the Roman Catholic uh, institution was not a Christian church. Or if he said Roman Catholics could not be Christians. For that reason, he was our target. I won't name any names, but I know of a preacher personally that's a very much, you know, attacks the Catholics. <laughs> and uh, certainly there's some of this stuff going on with me. You're, it's pretty interesting. Um, in Spain alone, I helped destroy at least 19 churches. You're under arrest. Crash. I let myself be caught in one raid in Spain, so my name would appear in the newspaper as a heretic. I also got a personal letter from the pastor of the church recommending me as a faithful and trustworthy Christian. He didn't, didn't know that I was responsible for the raid and his being in prison. I was 17 years old at the time. Okay. With that pastor's letter, I was accepted into a Baptist church in Venezuela. The institution sent me there to infiltrate and then transfer to a larger interdenominational theological seminary in Costa Rica. I was to get as many names as possible and send them back to the Vatican in Rome. My mission was the, to destroy the pastor and the church and the seminary. So, why, are, why all the names, Alberto? They are placed into uh, the huge computer for the Holy Office. Wait a minute, are you saying the Holy Office that ran the Inquisition is still in operation? Absolutely, they have the names of every Protestant pastor and the names of every church member in the world, including Roman Catholics in that computer. Uh, very, very true. They do all that stuff. That's, you know, that's why the NSA and a lot of the agencies here in America, the CIA and things, they're just under the Jesuit order. That's what they are. Uh, you know, and as, as I've said in other studies, you know, the Jesuits call themselves the company and so does the CIA. They also call themselves the company. Here it says, will it be used against them in the future? Absolutely, if they stand against the one world super church that Rome is trying to build. And those other enemies inside the institution who oppose the Roman Catholic charismatic movement will be put to death. You mean a new inquisition? Of course. By the way, this inquisition thing, uh, Pope Benedict, Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, he was the head of, in, of the Office of Inquisition for a while. So the Af Office of Inquisition is still there. Absolutely. Next page it says here, Absolutely she is the great whore, prostitute of the 17th chapter of Revelation. The tribulation saints will be put to death by her. These will be occult murders involving the black mass. And there he quotes Revelation 17 verses 5 through 6. He says, Come quickly, Lord Jesus, to which I will say, Amen. <laughs> yes, it won't be long. Thankfully, that's very true. Now back to how I destroyed the Baptist church in Venezuela. One half of the church believed the Roman Catholic institution was a Christian church, and I would tell them this. There he is saying, oh yes, I have many relatives in the Catholic church and who love the Lord and I believe are saved Christian believers. It is a Christian church. Those who don't believe this are causing tremendous division and damage to the body of Christ. Many have been destroyed in their own Christian faith when pastors attack them. It causes all kinds of confusion, distortion, and dissension. It must stop. We must preach love. <laughs> oh, boy. I love this. These are Jesuit phrases. Sound familiar? Hmm. Have you seen those in the comments of my videos? You're causing division. I know many good saved Catholics. You know, we must have, you know, unity. We must, you, you need to preach more love. Those are Jesuit phrases. Very interesting. Continuing here, it says, Then to the pastor and those backing him, I would say, O pastor, you are right. The Catholic Church is not Christian. I've suffered at their hands in Spain. They hate Christians. My dear pastor is still in prison. You must uh, cry out against it. Look at my name in the newspaper. They called me a heretic. 
they'll play both sides exactly as a lot of people do on YouTube. And, and again, I can't say that everybody that's in the comments that's doing this, they're all trained Jesuit, you know, co-juditers and things like this. I can't say that. But, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of weird. We were talking about this, my wife and I, and it's like, you know, you have Jesuit schools that are training actual Jesuits, but then you have those Jesuits years ago, generations ago, they've graduated and they've taken over the other schools. So they're now promoting the same Jesuitical type of philosophies and teachings. So even though you might have a college or a university that's not openly Jesuit, they're still infiltrated by the Jesuits and thereby teaching the same kind of stuff. It's crazy. But uh, it says here, while the Baptist pastor was getting me into the interdenominational seminary, we started a rumor that he was having an affair with an 18-year-old girl. She was a Catholic plant. She told the deacons who opposed the pastor that she wanted to confess that she had she and the pastor had an affair. The pastor was innocent. His wife divorced him. The church was destroyed. And I moved on to my next assignment. Yep. That's what the Catholic Church will do. Here's where it gets really interesting, I think. <clears throat> Before you go into that, Alberto, is there a set plan for destroying a strong man of God who will not compromise? Give in. Yes, here are three of the most important ways. Check this out. Discredit him. Isolate him. Death by various means. To be left alone without any friends or support is what they mean by isolate him. Number one. Destroy his reputation by lying about him, twisting something he said, making him look like an enemy in the country to get him in trouble with the officials, or frame him with a woman. She could be planted as his secretary to have an affair with him. Once we had a pastor called to a home late at night on the way we had a woman in distress on the side of the road. He stopped to help. She screamed rape, tore her dress, and her partner photographed them destroying the pastor. Yep. Government agencies or police investigate him because he was accused of in anything from pushing drugs to income, income tax evasion. When he proves his innocence, it's too late. The news media has already made him look guilty. His credit card or his credit can be messed up like uh, through credit cards. Everybody is told uh, but him putting him in a mess. Later, they apologize for the mix up when it's too late. All this is to make him look bad. Secret phone calls accusing his wife or children of obscene acts. These are only a few things to make him look bad. By now, he is considered unreliable and branded as a liar and a thief. Okay, now some of that stuff they haven't done to me yet, but uh, check this next thing out. Okay, keep hitting in mind YouTube comments and videos and things. It says here, a letter writing and whispering campaign gets started saying he is, quote, too controversial. He is a troublemaker. Hello? <laughs> Those opposing his stand call him an enemy, causing division. He's against unity. He's not showing God's love. He has his own strange doctrines or beliefs. He is left alone without pastor friends. A new lie is spread saying he had a nervous breakdown, so everything he says is unreliable. Most of them give in and compromise. It, it is easier than facing the heat. Isolation is used to force them out of ministry. Well, that never happens to me. I mean, I've never had anybody say that uh, I have my own strange doctrines or beliefs, you know. I mean, it's just incredible, you know. I can guarantee I've been attacked by Jesuits. I mean, I, I even had somebody on the channel for a little bit of time before I banned them from the channel. And their their uh, YouTube channel name was Temporo Coadjutor. <laughs> we'll see what that is here in a little bit, too. But it's insane. But continuing, it says here, the Protestant seminary I was to destroy was located in Costa Rica. It was interdenominational. Two beautiful girl, girls were assigned to help me. Both were from a Catholic youth action group posing as fundamental evangelical born-again Bible-believing Christians. You know, she was to be his girlfriend. She was supposed to introduce fornication there among the students. To prove I was anti-Catholic, I would argue in front of the other students with the Jesuit priests who came to the Bible college. Did those Jesuits know who you were? Oh yes, it was, an all, it was all an act. I reported everything about the school to those priests. In turn, they passed it on to the Holy Office in the Vatican. I caused unrest among the students by uh, going against the strict rules of separating the boys from the girls. 
I would hold hands with Carmen. You know, they're outraged about it. I set up a few handsome Catholic boys posing as a as Christians to seduce the younger later lady teachers. I visited the girls' dormitory after hours. Uh, one night, Carmen and I allowed ourselves on the grounds of the girls' dormitory. Uh, she was in her nightgown. All the girls were doing the same thing with other male students. They were like disgusting. Oh my, oh my! You know, there. How did this happen? So. It created a scandal in the newspapers. A Jesuit priest told the story. The college was shaken. It was branded as a place of corruption. It was all Jesuits doing this corruption. But I thought this was interesting. Check this out. I dressed as a slob always late. I started fights with the teachers and then accused them of not having Christian love. You're late again, Alberto, the guy says. Stop picking on me. Why are you always persecuting me? You know, you sound like a priest. At every opportunity, I convinced them that there are many good Christian Christians in the Catholic institution and that the Catholic schools were best because of discipline. No cover-ups, never a scandal. Of course, they'd have them all the time. You know, the Catholics are perverts on a you know, global scale. But, uh, you see, again, very interesting there. You know, when you pick on these, when you, when you rebuke these people because they're wicked, they go, stop picking on me. Why are you attacking me? I'm here trying to show you love and things. I, you know, talked about them, Billy Goat Christians, you know. Well, I really appreciate your ministry, but, you know, and all this stuff. It's just amazing. And, it, you know, you'll see this in the comments. Again, I see this so much with my videos. And they'll attack somebody or whatever else, or they'll attack me usually, and they, they come out, and at the end they say, but God bless, <laughs> you know. Well, you just call me a lying hypocrite and a devil and all this other stuff. But then you end it by saying, God bless, weird what are you dealing with there well either jesuits train jesuits or people trained by jesuits really amazing we'll go to the next one the godfathers volume 14 page one i'll let you read this i'm not going to take the time here but it's about uh you know, this guy here, a neo-Nazi, painting swastikas and things on a Jewish synagogue. And the Jews catch him and call the police. Talk about anti-Jewish you know, Jewish things and stuff like this. He says, this guy here, this guy that was painting on the synagogue, says they own everything. And this story about six million Jews being killed in just one is just one more lie made up by the Jewish press. She says, are you saying there was no Jewish Holocaust? Of course there wasn't. It's all a big lie. Well, um, thank you, Mr. Schmidt. Okay. And again, you, got, you get into this whole thing here of people that deny the Holocaust. Um, they try to cover up for the Vatican. They say that uh, the Vatican is not Mystery Babylon. Um, Stephen Anderson now Ken Hoven, I guess, too. So, got to watch out for these people. Now, here we have a great description um, of how, excuse me, I'll show this here, Volume 20, Jesuits. You have um, a great description of the different types of Jesuits and things that you can help better understand this. Over the next 10 to 14 years, an intensive weeding out process takes place. Candidates are regularly tested and placed in different groups and levels. Okay, you have four different classes. You have first class, second class, third class, fourth class. We'll start down here at the fourth class. It has not been decided where these people belong. They too must trust their superior as God and wait up to 14 years for his decision. Their goal is an elite team of the most dedicated men in the world, who will do anything for their Jesuit general without thought or hesitation. Uh, the Jesuit goal is to make the world serve the Pope by hook or by crook. Mm -hmm. Third class, approved scholarship. You have still indifferent here, approved scholars, or scholastics, excuse me. Uh, this is a student who promised promises to lay his future in the hands of his superior. 
uh, who will decide after 10 to 14 years of study where he will end up in the system, whether a, he becomes a Jesuit priest or a janitor. He trusts that his superior speaks for God. Then you have second class, the formed coadjutors. There are two kinds, spiritual coadjutors. These are lesser priests who can only hear confessions, preach, and teach. Temporal coadjutors. These are at the bottom of the barrel with no spiritual authority whatsoever. They work as cooks, guardians, etc., as long as they live for the greater glory of God. But these guys here, the temporal coadjutors, yeah, they're allowed to leave, live their own kind of little life or whatever, but when they're called upon by the Vatican to do some kind of a whatever, they'll spring to action. That's why they're dangerous. Then you have the first class, the professed. These are priests with SJ after their names if they want to be known. Uh, only a few of the Jesuits make it to this uh, class. This means that the vast majority of Jesuits are not priests. They take four vows, obedience, poverty, chastity, and special obedience to the Pope. Yeah. So there you have the definition of, of uh, the different types of Jesuits. Okay, now, I believe the majority of the infiltrators are the temporal uh, coadjutors. I think that they are the ones that are trying to infiltrate the Bible-believing movement right now. Um, it's pretty bad. And you say, well, how do we spot these people? Well, I'm going to talk about that real quickly here. What is one of the things that we read about earlier? The Jesuits like to make lists. They want to put people on lists. Hmm. I'm going to show you here. I was going to do it the low tech way. I'm just going to use my camera. Because I have the overhead here and that one there and everything. I don't have Camtasia on this uh, laptop. So I'll just uh, show you this. Okay, here we have. The scriptures alone, BibleSchool.net. This is Martin Richling's website uh, establishment. And he has the heretic list. And I think this is very interesting because he had a whole lot of people on here. But here he has the heretic Stephen L. Anderson. There's me, Brian Denlinger, Roger Jimenez, Tim Tebow. Okay. And uh, Man Made Study Bibles, Ken Hoven, Paul Chapel, Ted Alexander, Travis Burke. Um, and, and William A. Green there, I guess. But notice, it used to be that he had uh, me and Peter Ruckman and a whole bunch of others and things, legitimate teachers. And now it's like, I'm the only legitimate teacher on the whole list. I find that kind of interesting. Uh, Richling, I believe, uh, Eric Phelps even said it, you know, he believes that he's an actual Jesuit. You know, not just a coadjutor necessarily, but an actual Jesuit. Here you have this channel here just to show you this guy here Brandon Potter except ye be converted dot com um, this little heretic right here and check this out this is his except except ye be converted dot com now look at all the people he has here first of all he starts off easy believism major offender Ed Fenninger Ken Hoven Kevin Zacker Rick Jacoby Patrick the Baptist Mark Hunter uh, Stephen Anderson, James Bartlett, and uh, Jack Hiles. James should not be in this list. I'm give me a break. Um, David Fleming, David Stewart. Here you have uh, hyperdispensationalism Ruckmanites. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure who Josh Cohen is. Um, little message there. Greg Miller. That guy looks dangerous, doesn't he? Look at that guy. Brian Denlinger. We'll have to avoid him there, boys. Dangerous one. Uh, Peter Ruckman, Robert Breaker, Doug Stauffer, and Jim Beckwith. Hey, congratulations, Brother Jim. You're on the list. Now we have mid post trib rapture, offenders, Brian Moon and Jason Cooley, Sam Adams, Alex Jones, Christopher Johnson, Mario Brisson. This is how you say his name. I don't know. And here we have uh, Open Theism. These guys, I don't even know who these people are. Major Offender, Clinton Ames. Major Offender. Oh, what is this now? This is a conditional security. Okay. I've heard of this guy. He's pretty heretical. So is this one here. And she's just a charismatic wingnut. 
<clears throat> uh, Rudy Davis, Paul Kidd, Martin Richling. These are just, I guess these are uncat yeah, uncategorized heretics. But again, you see this this guy making this uh, uh, making this heretic list. You know, this Brandon Potter guy, and it's ironic because Brandon Potter actually sent us uh, pornographic images through the mail. You know, I don't know what his little game was there, but whatever, A weirdo. Uh, he's been banned from my channel. But here you have the repentance blacklist. This is Steven Anderson's website. And um, they have Anderson and Jack Hiles together. Jack Hiles, the habitual fornicator, mind control expert. I have whole videos on Jack Hiles exposing him. And then there you have the blacklist. And uh, no name repentance preachers. I'm still not on the list. I've, I've you know requested a couple times to be put on the list. That kind of upsets me. And he has his own little uh, thing of how to win souls or whatever. But again, you know, again, you have heretic lists. Isn't that what the Jesuits were doing? Lists of people making lists and things and, and whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there was another guy on my channel, and you got to watch out for this type of stuff. And, you know, I, I forget what his name was, King James Believer or something like this. And for a while I thought, oh, he looks legitimate, you know, and, and uh, supposedly he was a logger in Pennsylvania. And yet it was always like, it always bothered me. I'd see, he'd be posting comments at 9, 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning and things and in the middle of the week. And I'm going, you know, I wasn't logging very, very long. But uh, while I was in logging, I was usually out cutting timber, you know, at 9 or 10 a.m. You know, I wasn't posting comments on videos on YouTube. It just kind of bothered me. And, uh, you know, I saw this thing over and over again of, of, uh, you know, he was starting to ask more and more strange questions, weirder questions all the time. And after a while, I was just finally like, I did my thing about uh, the satanic agenda of television. And I noticed that he was just replying to every single person, trying to undermine what I was saying. I mean, you can disagree with me. That, that's fine. That doesn't make you a Jesuit temporal coadjutor or Jesuit or something. You can disagree with me. That's fine. But when I see people and they're just like, writing to every single person undermining what I'm saying, that's a problem. Was he a Jesuit? I have no idea. I don't really care because he's off my channel. But, you know, some weird stuff there. But uh, I just think that we need to be really, really careful um, about this uh, infiltration of the Jesuits, people that are trained Jesuits, people that are trained, you know, by Jesuits. In other words, you have Jesuits and people that are non-Jesuit, but trained for these things. But uh, the, the Vatican is trying very hard to infiltrate our numbers right now. It's going to be very, very difficult for them because, you see, we have the Holy Spirit of God to guide us into all truth. So I don't think that they're ever going to fully uh, infiltrate. But what they're doing is they're getting in and they're trying to cause uh, division and confusion among the new believers. That irritates me. I don't like that. I don't appreciate that. But you'll see a couple other areas uh, that they'll try to get in. Some of the big warning signs. Okay, first of all, somebody commenting and things saying what they are and whatever doesn't line up. Uh, this one guy that was a logger and yet posting comments throughout the morning, throughout the day on my videos. Uh, that's kind of odd. But um, <clears throat> what they'll try to do is they'll try to get you into the new versions. They'll try to undermine the authority of the King James Bible because the new versions are based upon the Nestle's text. Nestle's text, one of the board of editors, was a Jesuit cardinal, Carlo Maria Martini. So they will head towards the Nestle's text. That's one way you can see a, a Jesuit infiltrator. They will uh, be into replacement theology, saying that the Jews in Israel are no more. They're corrupt. They're wicked, whatever else. It's the church, you know, that uh, has replaced them. They'll be post-trib, pre-wrath, mid-trib, whatevers, you know, they'll, posties. They'll be into that. That's another big one. They will uh, confuse who Mystery Babylon is in Revelation 17 and 18. They'll do that one. Of course, it's very important for them because 
uh, Revelation 17 is a terrible indictment of uh, Roman Catholicism. And it's a, it's a reminder to the Roman Catholic system that they're going to be destroyed in the future. That's why their little agents want to get people's attention away from that and say, oh, it's uh, America or it's wherever. They don't want people thinking about it being the Vatican, uh, being paid back for all the evil that they've done. So uh, they'll, they'll, they'll hit a couple different spots, you know, of uh, like the CCM stuff. They'll do that. They'll bring that in a little bit too. Um, the Jesuit infiltrators. So we just need to be really careful of uh, infiltration coming into our circles. We need to really pray. Um, be very careful um, who you believe down in the comments section because there's a lot of Jesuit infiltrators out there. So I believe that that is going to be it for this video. Please, please, please keep us in your prayers because we are getting attacked, as you've seen, <laughs> right from Alberto's comic books. You know, when you have people coming out saying you're being too controversial, take it easy on the Catholics, you know, whatever, whatever, you don't have enough love. Those are statements of Jesuits. And where, does, where do you draw that line between people who have been brainwashed by the Jesuits and just repeat things that the Jesuits teach them and actual Jesuits that are trained to say these things? I don't know. It's hard to draw that line. But... Um, we're going to close for now and uh, have some other very interesting videos that I want to come out with here. So i gotta, I got to quit. Uh, getting really tired right now. having a hard time keeping my eyes open. <laughs> um, but uh, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. <laughs> I'll tell you what, very true many, many times. But i um, got to get some more studies done, so I guess I'm going to quit for now. But just keep these things in mind. Um, be very, very sober. Be vigilant. Because our adversary, as a roaring lion, is walking around right now, roaming about seeking whom he may devour. And he's going to use the Jesuits to do it. So, that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.